nice looking Prius, plug-in Prius. Yes, it's a 2007 Prius that I had retrofitted with a 10 kilowatt battery pack. Now what exactly does that mean? Uh, well, what it is is uh, in 2007 they didn't have Priuses that you could plug in and drive um, in all electric. You didn't, they didn't even have plug-in ones. And uh, originally I wanted to have a car that would uh, reduce my use of petroleum and then eventually I had hoped to uh, be able to produce my own electricity. So when the time came along that I thought it was time to trade in the Prius for a newer Prius because at that point Prius Toyota was uh, making cars that you could plug in and then drive on all electric for a limited amount of mileage. And so when I investigated that I found that it wouldn't really fit my needs because it, they can go about 30 miles an hour uh, standard out of the factory for about I think 15 miles and my local driving require, requires freeway driving. Well you like to drive a bit faster than 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I have to go on the freeway and <laughs> with this retrofit that uh, Plug-in Supply does, <clears throat> Rob Prothero, uh, I can drive 52 miles an hour cool. and I can drive about uh, about 32 miles before I run out of electricity. The advantage of this though uh, system is that when I run out of electricity I uh, can just drive with the regular Prius gasoline so uh, if, if I don't have it planned out right I just drive with gasoline. So it's a true hybrid? It's, it's a true hybrid, yeah. right? It's turned into a true hybrid now. Yeah. I can drive in three different modes, all gasoline, uh, a mixture of gasoline and uh, battery pack. The way that uh, the software is designed, the, uh, it emphasizes through the Toyota uh, software to use the battery instead of the gasoline motor. So when you're in the mix mode, you get a lot better mileage. I probably get mid-70s. Let's have a look. And uh, <clears throat> When it's, of course... Mid-70s, meaning 70 miles a gallon? Yeah, wow. somewhere in there, mid-70s. Uh, there's two different uh, battery packs with the 10 kilowatt I could have had put in. One would fit completely underneath, uh, but this one half fits underneath and half above because with this 10 kilowatt particular system, it takes up more uh, room. And I chose this and it ended up being... So this is the battery here. Yeah, so there's this much here and then this much underneath. That you don't see. But this worked out really well for me because what happened was uh, it really helped the stability and driving of the car because if you notice all of the battery's weight is either over the back wheel or forward of the back wheel so that there's none in back of it. Uh -huh. And also the springs uh, because they're designed for the weight going back originally beyond the back wheel uh, it lifts the back of the car up a little. And so with that and the uh, heavy duty stabilization plate I put in underneath to replace the uh, factory plate, this car handles really well on curves and the wind. And from the factory it was just so-so handling. Mm. Handles great now. It likes the weight. It, it likes the weight because of where it's positioned and mm. the stabilization uh, plate I put underneath. So 10 kilowatt means... Well, like it, what, it, what it means is uh, when I use up 10 kilowatts, uh, I need to recharge it. Okay. And so that's how much I need to recharge. Okay. Actually, uh, it would be 80% of the 10 kilowatts, but this actually I think is more than 10 kilowatts because I've measured the uh, how much it takes to refill these batteries, mm -hmm. and actually it takes a little more than 10 kilowatts, so it really is a little bigger pack than that. Uh -huh. Uh, and then I put in a, originally what I wanted was to be able to uh, use my, uh, my own electricity to drive this car. And so I drive the car approximately 400 miles a month. And so what I need to do is produce enough electricity to replace that, which would be about, uh, per month, I figure about 120 kilowatts. And so I put in a 1.5 a uh, kilowatt solar array on top of a pole and I've had the car 
running on uh, this system for a little over a year, mm -hmm. and I put in the uh, pole mount system and started producing electricity about three and a half months ago. And this is, you know, January through mid-April, and I'm producing more electricity even half a mile from the coast in Humboldt County, in Humboldt County than I'm using to drive the car 400 miles uh, locally. Uh, and and 95% of that is all electric, maybe 5% gas. Wow, yes. pretty cool. Yeah, so anyway, this Let's is... Let's have a look in the front. Yeah, this is how the uh, system works. Uh, there's a, a system here. This, this allows me to use the, the three different modes. Two modes are right here with this. I can uh, use the mix mode or I can use the all electric or I can just turn it off. That's done here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or I can just turn it off and then it's just on uh, the original Prius which is just gas. So if someone else gets into the car who's not used to driving it, who doesn't want to mess with it, they can just turn I on ju the... I just turn it off. Turn. Yeah, so they don't even have to know it's even, there. even it's there. It's just a regular Prius. Cool. Yeah. And then in the back uh, seat, what we, uh, what I have here, and this, this ended up being a really good place to put it. This changes the electricity from AC to DC because you need to charge these batteries with DC and uh, since I have my solar system is I have micro inverters that change immediately from the solar panels change the DC into AC and it goes into the grid I'm I'm coming off the grid for this mm -hmm. and uh, so I need to change it back to DC and this There's mechanism here this converter changes it back to DC and so I just ran out uh, 220 that that converter will do 220 or 120 and if uh, I use the 220 which I have here I can recharge the whole 10 kilowatts in uh, four hours if you have a 110 that's not, that's not bad not bad in 110 it would take eight hours uh -huh. and, like and an I, overnight it's done charging right now the green lights on it would be red if it was charging mm. so I can unplug this now so it's um, it's a pretty neat little system you've got in here. Like he designed something for it, pretty clean. He designed, like your car has yeah. got a lot of space in it still, considering it's got an interesting project in it. Yeah, it's got a lot of space. It it's worked great for me. Now, I mean, if you really wanted more space, uh, a a different kilo ten kilowatt battery system that he has will fit totally underneath here, uh -huh. and that's totally open but the handling of the car is so much better now than yeah. it was from the factory that I prefer this and it's all strapped down so it's just yeah held and yeah so if, if you were in an accident it wouldn't go flying around yeah. nice design yeah so So Perfect. this is the rest of the battery There's pack the here. Battery, so this yeah. and another one, just like it forward. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those that half fit underneath. Yeah. And so it still leaves me a little bit of room to keep some oil in. And you have a spare tire underneath here. Still? And there's a spare tire underneath here. Okay. So you have to take it apart to get to the spare tire. So mm -hmm. there's a few things you give up in order to get this, but it's well worth it. So like, if you were going to have to change a tire, like, could you do it in half an hour? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not too Be bad. Because I've, I've taken this apart before, so I've got everything labeled, all the wires labeled it, where they go back and everything. Uh -huh. uh, so I could take it apart and put it back together because I had to put in a new uh, battery to the Prius. Okay. And so I know how to do that now. Okay. And then I like to carry an extra cord around with me so that I can always uh, recharge at a friend's house. Yeah, wherever. And so okay. I can recharge with one tan then. Ah, See, okay, okay. That's a 110. Okay, you leave the, leave the 220 here. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes, you're set for pilfering. Yes. Pilfering power. Yeah, pilfering power. Pilfering power from <laughs> friends. Bumper sticker coming. Nice. Yeah, so this has worked out just uh, really well. I'm very happy with the system. Hey, let's go look at the solar system. Okay, panels. and, and the, the other thing that work, has worked out well for me is that. Uh, about every two months I go on uh, a trip that's maybe 800 miles and so then I can just uh, drive with a regular Prius 
and I can use the uh, mix mode for about 100 miles and get mode. probably about 75 miles a gallon. Uh -huh. I think that that's what I remember checking it at. Yeah. And then the rest is gasoline, so I can go on long distances with this, yeah. and then locally I get all electric, all electric driving. Well, I know it's a real nice drive. It's quiet. Yes. Even quieter than the Prius, but it functions pretty much the same except for no heat. Yeah, no heat, but also you, you can only go 52 miles an hour, oh, yeah. and you don't want to be going up a bunch of steep hills on the freeway because yeah. you, it's a small electric engine that they've yeah. supplied from the factory. Cool. Okay, well, let's go look at the solar array. Super. So, these six panels will create enough energy to power your car? Yeah, there, it's a 1.5 kilowatt system uh, and I need to produce a minimum of 120 kilowatts a month because I drive 400 miles a month local driving ah. and if I want to drive all electric. And this will produce uh, 120 kilowatts a month uh, so far January through mid-April, I've produced, produced enough to uh, power the car totally. And so, you know, this is a half a mile off of the ocean uh, in Humboldt County, and we're still, be, still able to produce that amount of electricity. Yeah. I'll be producing way more through the year than I need for driving the car. And that was your original goal? And that was the original goal. Yeah. That's why I uh, got the plug-in supply system from Rob Prothrow. Nice job. Nice panels. Yeah, these, these... So these are six panels. Six 250-watt panels. Uh, and there's micro-inverters on them. So actually, I'm working on the grid. This, it goes directly to the grid because it changes immediately from the panel from DC to AC. Ah. And so when I uh, plug the car in over there, I need to tr transfer it back to DC. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the micro-inverters and end phase, I'm able to look on the internet and see exactly how much this is producing every day, every okay. panel. Okay. And so I know how much how much I'm producing and I know how much I need okay. for the car. Nice. Well, the nice thing about pole mounted too is you can direct it to get the sun. Well, I can change the angle. I change the angle every month so it's optimal for the uh, for the sun angle. Yeah, neat. So in the winter it's almost vertical and in the summer it'll almost be horizontal. Well, six panels, how much did that cost approximately to, to well, install? Well, yeah, I installed it all of myself, and it was a little under 6000 So 6000 and that powers your car for the, your local car. needs. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing is, is at this point in time, I think that the Prius, is, Prius with a 10-kilowatt uh, conversion is really a good, good solution because I'm able to do long-distance driving, and yet all of my local driving, or at least 95%, is uh, all electric. And if I were to go into an all electric car, anything that has that kind of range, which is only the Tesla, is a $70,000 car now. Yeah, well that's and, something else. And so that's a whole different equation. Now, you know, in the future they're going to come out with a car that's half of that, but at this point, the Prius is really a good choice, especially for me. With the battery pack. With the battery pack, because I already had the Prius. Mm -hmm. And so all I had to do is add the battery pack. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's gone from uh, a, a hybrid that you don't plug in to a hybrid that you do plug in to an all-electric solar-powered car. Yay!